All right, ladies and gents, we are back to From My Understanding. And this week, I chose something I don't really understand. I chose something very difficult to understand that people are basically saying they don't understand yet. So why would I understand it? But we're going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to incept this idea into your mind in the simplest way I know how first. And then I will extrapolate um, for about five minutes. I'm going to start my timer on this one because it truly will just be me jabbering. So um, let's go. Okay, this uh, theory, we'll call it, because no one knows if it's true. It's a, this is what Julian Jane came up with. This is what he thinks, and I found it interesting. So that's what we're talking about it. The origin of consciousness and the breakdown of the bicameral mind. I have to read it because this title is a book. Um, but I'm going to try to explain it very simply first off. Okay, so what does bicameral mean? Let's just start there. Bicameral just means two chambers. And what that is in reference to is to the two halves, the two hemispheres of your brain. And this is what Julian Jaynes' whole kind of thesis is built upon. Julian Jaynes is saying that consciousness is actually a recent development of man, and it came about through language. Now, before language, the two halves of the brain, which uh, uh, worked separately and worked independently of each other, uh, and the right hemisphere was the decision maker and had to tell the uh, left hemisphere what to do. And that usually came about through uh, hallucinations that this is what Julian James came through, uh, came to all of the texts that say things like uh, God spoke, uh, the, the angels, the demons, the whatever, all of these supernatural things uh, that we read about in ancient texts, uh, specifically the Iliad, I saw people reference. In the Iliad, you just see that uh, gods tell people what to do. There's, it's not like, oh, I thought for myself and I went to do this thing. No, these supernatural beings told people what to do. Julian James is saying that is the brain hallucinating in order to get messages to the other hemisphere. Now, when language came about, this... Uh, enabled the brain to bypass these hallucinations and just use language to, to say, hey, right side of the brain, I'm telling you this left side of the brain. Um, so, okay, we got that. Uh, bicameral means two. Uh, Julian Jane said that early uh, mankind would hallucinate um, these beings they thought were gods or whatnot, uh, and it came to them in uh, hallucinations. Okay, all right, now that we got the basic uh, theory of what Julian Jane had to say about consciousness, these are some uh, interesting things that he says that uh, also comes about by through consciousness. Um, spatialization. You imagine your thoughts and your consciousness is happening inside of your head, like when you picture you thinking or you talking to someone else, you, you're really imagining yourself talking to that space behind their eyes and your space behind their eyes really uh, communicating to them. And this is called spatialization. And uh, your consciousness does this in order to uh, place things because um, you have if, if, if there's no reference to things, you can't reference things. And that's the only way we really learn is by reference, if you truly think about it. Um, your consciousness is really built upon uh, stories and experiences that you've had that you now reference to other things that are coming um, into your life or into your experiences so that when something new comes along, you're like, oh, this is like this other thing. Like, so if I if I say the word bird to you, if I, if I tell you to imagine a bird, you're thinking about probably a generic bird that you've seen, but you're not really thinking about a penguin or something else because that's not a regular signifier of a bird. But the next time you see something with two wings, uh, you know, some little claws or something, you're like, oh, I've seen that, that's a bird. That's a reference to something else that you've learned, which is also a reference to a word, which is what Julian James is saying is that you couldn't reference things and have this higher level of consciousness if you didn't have language. <sighs> Something else consciousness does is called excerptions. 
Um, because in real life, you can't focus on more than one thing at a time. People think that uh, multitasking is a real thing. It's not. You're just um, dissecting your attention up into little bits um, over, a sm over a large period or a small period of time. You're not really focusing on the six things at one time. And so once again, your consciousness is trying to be a metaphor for the real world. So it is going to only excerpt certain things. So if I tell you to imagine your hometown, you're not going to think about the entire, every single street, every single house. You're going to be picking out a few things that make sense to you, that are metaphors to you of what home means. And that's what's called an exception. And your consciousness does that because it can't focus on a whole bunch of things. It can only focus on a few things and make that a metaphor of the world. So in the same way that your brain cannot think about your entire town at one time, it cannot think about your entire being at one time. So in the same way that it excerpts for larger bits of information or concepts, your brain excerpts for yourself and that's called an analog. Uh, an analog is a representation of yourself in your mind. So the same way that, uh, say, let's go with a map. A map is used for you you can see the map and you can learn the map, but and the map is helping you to learn the actual world that you're in. But the person that made the map had to first learn the world and then um, translate it to photography on a map. And so that is literally what your brain is doing at all times. At all times, your brain is both making a metaphor of the world and learning it at the same time. So it's, it's, it's a constant um, input and rendering of what you think you are experiencing out in the world because you can't experience everything. So your brain is metaphoring it down for you. Uh, and that makes an analog of you. And so you are, in fact, a map of yourself and the world. Last big points I could kind of grasp was narratization. Narratization. Narrat narratization let's go with that narratization uh you are constantly creating a story about your life and yourself and things that do not align with that story we often forget or downplay or don't involve at all in our story uh but um that is that is how you as a consciousness are learning this world are um becoming smarter and better and more equipped in this world is that you are constantly telling a story of yourself in it. And um, that is how we can say things like the I or the me. The ego is actually an object in your consciousness because your ego is just a representation of you. And that is just something that you have built as a map to guide yourself through the world. I think I got it, guys. I think I completely broke down Julian Jaynes, uh, The Origin of Consciousness and the Breakdown of, by Campbell Mind. <laughs> so you don't have to read it. I actually did read it a while ago because I found this via Westworld. I was watching Westworld and they talked about this uh, this theory and at first I thought it was fake, but then I looked it up and it was real and uh, it was really interesting. And it still is interesting and I'm still, I'm gonna keep reading up about it because I obviously hadn't grasped it completely. But uh, yeah, if you are interested, I I suggest you do get the book. It is it is actually a very good read. It's not it, you know, take your time with it. It's a little dense, but um, it's very beautiful. It's very beautiful how it lays out its its uh, its thoughts and ideas. And um, what a way what a way for consciousness to come about if this is it. So thank you again for joining us. And from my understanding, hopefully it wasn't too long. Hopefully it wasn't too rambling. Hopefully you learn or were entertained by something that happened train wreck uh we'll see you next time peace